right, everybody. Welcome to New Media Patriot Radio, the show about you, the concerned citizen, the silent majority, the politically incorrect, the social media patriot fighting every single day to restore American values and exceptionalism. You can now listen to us via ICRN, the new home of conservative talk radio at conservativeradionetwork.com. I'm also being syndicated on rebootingliberty.com. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me at the Patriot 143 or at NMP Radio. It stands for New Media Patriot Radio. Also, if you want to be a guest on the show and you want to get your name, uh, uh, your, your story heard, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm a little sick over here, so cut me a break. You can email us at newmediapatriot at gmail.com. I am your host, and the number to call is 347-338-1775. Before I introduce my guests, I just want to do a little house cleaning here. Uh, please visit our website, newmediapatriotradio.com, for all the latest news and all the, the latest archive shows. Uh, you can listen to us via Spreaker, iTunes, and SoundCloud on demand. Um, and uh, today's show is going to be interesting. Well, it, it's always interesting, uh, to say the least. But uh, the, the Stop Trump movement gets a boost from uh, from Mexico, uh, basically, Mexico is mounting an unprecedented effort um, to to make the permanent legal residents that, that are here in the U.S. into citizens, so they can vote this upcoming election. Also, Roger Stone warns Trump to beware of the Trojan horse delegates. Uh, we're going to be talking about that and so much more here on the Salad Majority on New Media Patriot Radio. Again, the number to call is 347-338-1775. And uh, before I introduce my guests, really quick, if you are on Twitter, I know I get this all the time. People want to debate me on Twitter, and I, and I simply say, just call the show. I won't bite. We can debate this. You know, I, I basically created the show because 140 characters just wasn't enough. So I cannot express myself, and I don't feel like sitting there wasting my time typing away debating somebody. Just call the show, and we can debate. Whatever you want to debate, we'll debate it on the air. I'm not afraid. You know, so just give us a call. 347 338 is 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 the number. So anyway, uh, today, uh, today I have a co-host. Uh, his name is Magellan. He has his own radio show. I want to welcome him in right now. How are you, Magellan? I'm doing well. Good to be with you tonight, and hello to everyone that's listening. So, re- to be here. Re- really quick, where where do, where do where can people go listen to your show? Yeah, absolutely. We're on Spreaker, and I absolutely love Spreaker. It's a it's a great platform uh, for those of you that are getting out there and wanting to uh, let your voice be heard. Maybe you want to do kind of the same thing that uh, the Patriots do, and I'm doing. Uh, great way to do that. Uh, but as far as my program goes, you can go to Spreaker.com forward slash Real Magellan. So just type that in, Real Magellan, and you'll find me there. And uh, we've been on Spreaker for a few months. We used to be on another uh, programming platform. But, you know, we just we talk about a lot of the same things and uh, similar things, that is. Uh, not exactly the same, but uh, I'm just glad to be here, honored awesome. to be here, because I think... Uh, we'll have a great time. Awesome, awesome. And before I introduce my first guest, um, I just want to let, remind everybody that at 7.20, I have Victor uh, uh, Brew. Uh, he's calling in. He's going to be breaking down um, breaking down the, the, uh, how, uh, how Donald Trump is basically outperforming Mitt Romney, uh, from, uh, 2012. He's gonna, he's gonna break that down. He actually spent a lot of time, uh, breaking the numbers down. He's gonna be calling us and, uh, talking about that. And at 740, I have John Forrest calling in from, uh, forrestinc.com. This guy's giving away free t-shirts, free Donald Trump, uh, Patriots for Donald Trump t-shirts. So stay tuned for that. That's at, uh, 740. But right now, I wanna, I wanna welcome in, uh, Marcos Power. Marcos Power, basically wrote a great article um, on Danger and Play, uh, the website. Uh, it's uh, www.dangerandplay.com. He wrote a, a great a great detailed description as to what happened during the Chicago uh, uh Rally riots over there. That, uh, when when Donald Trump was uh, was having his rally, there was a huge uh, a huge riot there. And uh, I'm going to welcome him right now, uh, Marcos. How are you, sir? Welcome to the Sound Majority. Chris, man, thanks for having me. What's going on, brother? Hey, no problem. I want you to say hi to uh, I want you to say hi to my co-host for the night, Magellan. Magellan, how's it going? Uh, going well. How you doing? Awesome. Pretty well. 
Thanks for having me on, guys. Hey, no problem. So let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. You know, I came across this article. I was on Twitter, and I saw I saw this tweet, and basically it it uh, it described uh, to a T as to what went on. Now, you were at this rally. You were at this rally. You live in Chicago. Um, you 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 basically told me that you weren't able to get into the rally. So, what happened um, after that? You know, I was able to get in the UIC pavilion where it was held at. Okay. Um, by the time I did get in, though, it uh, it was canceled, but it was just filled with these uh, protesters and rioters just running around. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, but it, go ahead. I'll just say I can go into a little bit more about what happened outside as well. Sure. Uh, tell us what happened inside. Like, uh, how, how soon... How soon before you got uh, you got in there did you start the, the like who who were the initiators of this whole thing um, was it was it the uh, the Black Lives Matter movement or was it uh, was it the 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 uh, the, the, the uh, rally goers and uh, also did you see any any family with kids over there that were kind of um, you know uh, being put into danger? Sure. Uh, what I can tell you is that well later on we learned that move dot org move on dot org was one of the organizations organizing a lot of these people there. Mm -hmm. There were Black Lives Matter there. There were just a lot of uh, college-age kids who live in the area there that were just anti-Trump protesters. Uh, I couldn't point out one group, but I will say there were a lot of uh, Bernie Sanders signs everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and in regards to the family, yes, I actually saw one that I'd, I had put in the article there. Uh, this was this, uh, I believe it was Filipino family, mm -hmm. uh, mom and dad, and I can tell they're from the Philippines because I heard them speak, and they're there with their two kids. And they were just horrified. Uh, they were, if you can imagine, you're around a uh, stadium with a court in the middle, which we're, we're supposed to be held, right. and it's just hundreds and hundreds of these protesters running around wild down there. Right. Um, hold on one second. I want to pick up this call, uh, Victor. Victor, how are you? Welcome to the Sound of Majority. You have a you have a comment or a question? Hi. How are you today? Good. I'm doing great. You have a you have a question or a comment? Uh, on what you were just speaking about, right? Yes. Are you, it's it's cutting out. All right. Well, they hung up. Okay. Anyway, uh, so let's 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 go on. Okay. So you say that uh, you saw a lot of black uh, Black Lives Matter people there, but did you also see like because uh, I remember seeing on the news like uh, like Palestinian flags, uh, Russian flags, uh, um, and stuff like that. Did you see that as well? Sure. Actually, it was, it was funny when I went back and watched one of my videos that I taped inside. I hear people close to me chanting "Free Palestine, Free Free Palestine." So uh, they, they were in there. Uh, mostly, I just saw a few Mexican flags. Um, I saw the Soviet, I believe the Soviet Union flag was also in display there. So those are the flags that I saw flying around. Actually, that's what I meant. Soviet Union, not Russian. But <laughs> so, so, sure. so, sorry about that. So. Um, did you see how many how many police officers were actually inside the venue? Do you feel like do you feel that there were there were enough uh, uh, enough uh, police officers inside the venue protecting uh, the rally goers there or no? <laughs> you know, I've described this to some other people and my friends. It's kind of like uh, when you're at camp and the campers are running wild and mm -hmm. there's just not enough camp counselors to chase around them all right. and round them up. There were a lot of cops, but there these were just people who were just out of control, and there's so many of them. I don't think unless they're one for one, they could have had enough to even. They just weren't complying at all. Right, right. Uh, Magellan, you have a question mm -hmm. for? Uh... Well, yeah, you know, one of my questions is obviously, you know, you had a, a large group there that were against Donald Trump. Uh, the media reported on that, but one of the things that I was watching. As I was viewing, I believe it was Fox News and CNN, just trying to get a, a grasp as to what was going on, when some of the reporters, I'm talking about mainstream news reporters, would approach certain people at, at the rally, I'm talking about outside, and they would ask them, you know, why are you here? And they would not give an answer. Now, some of them did, you know, it gave a, you know, a very bold answer. Hey, we're here because we want to stop Donald Trump. But there were some that, Almost like they didn't even know why they were there. Like they were told, "Hey, come. Here's where it's going to be. This is where it's all going down." But it's mm -hmm. almost like a lot of them didn't even know what was what was even going on. Yeah. Uh, like like they were being, I mean, were they being hired to do this? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have to wonder 
uh, you know, kind of what the whole dynamic was. Right. You listen to the census and I, all that. Right. You listen to the sound of majority here on New Media Patriot Radio on the Rebooting Liberty Hotline. I have my co-host um, Magellan, and also on uh, on the Rebooting Liberty Hotline, I have Marcos Powers, who was actually at the uh, Chicago uh, rally riots. Uh, go ahead, uh, Marcos. What were you going to say? I was going to say, uh, you know, one of the reasons I believe in a lot of these. Uh, like I said, I refer to them as kids because some of them are, you know, anywhere 17, 18, 19 years old running around there. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, they're there just, if you guys have heard the term signaling, right. they're trying to virtue signal where, you know, they're trying to look good for the other friends saying, I was here supporting the cause and basically just to score points for their friends. They weren't really there. I don't think a lot of them just because they had any beliefs or any reason like that. Okay. Uh, I want to pick up this call now. Well, I'm at, I'm at. Hold on one second. Let me just pick up this call. Uh, Victor, how are you? Welcome to the Sound of Majority. you have a question or a comment? Hi, Chris. Sorry about that earlier. I lost connection. Yeah. Uh, concerning the riots, I think it's interesting to kind of point out the fact that uh, all the way up until this election, to that particular primary, all you would hear from any progressive media outlet, that's including some on Fox News, uh, is the simple fact that <laughs> – excuse me. It's okay. All you would hear on these progressive news outlets is the simple fact that uh, uh, Donald Trump just simply had no chance, no chance in the primary – uh, in fact, they were so all, they had the audacity to even proclaim that they want him to run, you know, using some sort of a reverse psychology, I guess, just trying to psych out the Republican voters. Mm-hmm. They're, they're excited about a Donald Trump run that happened in the very the beginning stages of the primary. And that, that was pro- I mean, that would seem to be a consistent trend from uh, talk show host to talk show host. No matter what channel you'd flip it on, they were they were wanting Donald Trump to win because he was sure to lose. Right. right. But uh, something interesting to point out at this point, especially after the Chicago riots, is where are if he's not such a big threat, then why are they protesting? And secondly, at the end of the day, where are the Ted Cruz protests? Exactly. Well, that's why I mentioned this on previous shows. Uh, thank you for the call. Um, I, I mentioned this on previous shows uh, that, uh, you know, there's a reason why the Pope, why the Mexican uh, ex-president and the current president, why all these world leaders are, are against Donald Trump. You know why? Because the games are going to stop. America is going to finally be put on the forefront. The American citizen are, are going to be put first. Uh, what, what do you have to say about that, uh, Marcos? How do you feel about that? I completely agree. You know, if if Cruz was such a threat to their uh, the powers that be in the establishment, whoever you might want to refer to as establishment, mm-hmm. they'd be all over Cruz. They know they can't buy Trump. I mean, Cruz's wife was is, has ties to Goldman Sachs. She was banking there. I mean, if Cruz has been in government for a while. I consider him a big insider. So if Trump is – they can't control Trump. So he's a huge threat to the Republicans' establishment and the Democrats. That's why the Republican establishment wants Hillary because they will keep their positions as they are now. But there's no guarantee if Trump wins the presidency, that wouldn't be the case. There's a reason why Hillary came out last week and basically said, listen, uh, uh, they, they caught her on a hot mic while she was on CNN saying, listen, why are you covering Donald Trump? Like you can tell she was fearful of facing him in the general election because Donald Trump has no filter. He will go after her. He is no Mitt Romney. He's going to go after her dirty. He's going to he's going to you know, he's basically going to, you know, run it through the mud and, uh, and and and, you know, and talk about every single dirty thing she's done in her career. Uh Magellan, how did you feel about the fact that you had all these all these presidential uh, uh, candidates ca- coming out right after the the uh, the the, um, the riots in Chicago coming out and basically defending these leftist uh, anarchists who who basically are being funded uh, by MoveOn.org and Soros um, and blaming these riots on Donald Trump when in reality, if any of them would have had been the front runner, that this still would have ha- had happened at any of their rallies because their main objective is to is to is to kill the, the the constitutional republic that we have here in the United States. Yeah, so I have to speak out on this, and I'm, I'm glad you asked that question because when I was watching the coverage that night, I thought it was absolutely disgusting. Whatever respect that I had had oh. as for, uh, let's say, Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio, we'll focus more on Ted Cruz because he's a little bit more of a viable candidate, and, and Rubio's out of the race now. Uh, and to me, it was just, it was almost like Cruz was taking that opportunity as he always does to give his pitch, his, you know, and, and he didn't just speak out uh, really in defense of, of the, uh, of the protesters, the, you know, the, the rioters, but, but he also was giving his, his plan point by point, even went so far. 